Welcome to Egg Foo. What? First and only podcast about people eating stuff. I'm Mike Lisk. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of Egg Foo. What? Young Michael, I like the way you hang after the what now. Yeah. Now that you feel like you've got it nailed, mm -hmm. you kind of let it sit for a minute. Yeah. The pregnant pause. Pregnant pause. Very dramatic. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Did you have a nice 4th of July? Uh, yeah, it was nice. Mm -hmm. uh, it was weird, right? Because it being on a Tuesday, but I worked on Monday. But a lot of people kind of didn't work. But when they have these lead ups, like, so you kind of dick around on Friday, then you go do your 4th of July thing. And like four days later, it's still not really 4th of July. Yeah. Yeah. Like last night they started the fireworks and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what? Wasn't this like days ago? So it's very weird. It's anticlimactic. See, in my my neighborhood, I mean, the, the fireworks started on Friday night. They don't, those, and I'm saying night. Fireworks. What's that? Those weren't fireworks, Mike. <laughs> well, I'm calling them fireworks, but um, they don't even wait until it gets dark. For one, you know, they, they're so impatient. <laughs> yeah. That's so true, Friday's true. kicked it off. Saturday, I think, was the height of the fireworks surrounding me. I mean, I could literally go out on the back porch, look in the air, and stuff is flying. You know, I'm getting my own little show, private little show in my backyard. Yeah. Um, Sunday, there was still some fireworks going. But yeah, my neighborhood was done. They, they, <laughs> They literally shot their load over the weekend. So on Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday, they were spent. They were spent. And yeah. uh, by spent, I, I I mean that they didn't have that many fireworks left. We know what you mean. Okay. <laughs> that, okay. Wouldn't it make sense to like, now that I'm thinking of, well, let's just have 4th of July always on like the Friday. Friday right. or Monday. Yeah, either way. Like President's Day, yeah. Either way. Labor Day, Memorial a, Day, yeah. Have it on a Friday. Everybody goes out and everybody, boom, and then it's over. Whereas you do it on a Tuesday and everybody kind of drifts into it. And like I said, I had had like basically a four-day holiday. Yeah. Before, and then then it starts for real. And I'm like, who's, who's bothered going out to the mall or whatever now? Like, aren't you, as you would say, spent... Uh, with this for so and when it's on wednesday work? it's even worse right you know it's in the middle of the week it's it's stranded <laughs> yeah and it's I like mean, why don't we why don't we start a movement right here today let's have the fourth of july always on the friday i'm with you on that one i mean you start out you can have the friday off but yeah that first day you do all the fourth of july stuff you do the fireworks whatever and then you do whatever so yeah that way you don't have this anti-climatic feel yeah to uh, the freedom that we celebrate. Yeah, we, we stopped tying President's Day to the actual birthday of mm -hmm. uh, Washington and Lincoln. So it's mm -hmm. not like it's uh, unprecedented to yeah. uh, give us a, a long weekend. So no, I'm yeah. all with you on that one. We'll start the petition tomorrow. Thanks, buddy. I'll do a poll on Twitter, you know, kick it off. <laughs> oh, boy. We'll make this We'll make this happen. Great. Uh-huh. Now with one of your polls. <laughs> Did you uh, meet? Okay, your... so it was very, uh, it's very relaxed and enjoyable. Had some family time, had some friends' time. Uh -huh. uh, very nice. Other than the weird day of the week. So, did you meet the quota for uh, hamburgers, hot dogs, potato salad? Oh uh, no, I we had steak. We grilled some steaks one Ooh, night. Look at you! Look at you! Hey. <laughs> Things are good, Mike. <laughs> Did you crack get that? Open an, crack open it. Crack open an earning statement every once in a while, bro. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I don't even think I had a burger or hot dog all weekend. Uh, yeah. mm -mm. I made but, a I feeble mean, attempt. I hmm. went to a Five Guys, and uh, I got one of each. Mm -hmm. Their hot dogs are not that good. They're fine. They're nowhere near as good as their burgers. Like no, Shake Shack too. They have a hot dog too, 
And I like it because they butter the bun and grill it. Uh -huh. But it's fine. You know, it's fine. But I don't know why you'd ever get that over the burger. Same with Five Guys. Well, it's a it's a half assed effort. You know, they did, they don't even have sauerkraut. They don't even have chili. I mean, why you know, do you have sauerkraut on America's birthday? <laughs> Excuse I me. I uh, I like uh, sauerkraut and mustard on a hot dog. I know some people like the chili. It's a little messy for me. But uh, what do you what do you what, what what's your favorite on a hot dog? Yes, yeah, sauerkraut and mustard. Sauerkraut and mustard. Yeah, Ooh. that sounds strange to you. <laughs> I mean, well, well, no. I mean, I understand. Uh, the, the sauerkraut coming out so quickly was surprising. I mean, you shot it out there like you've been waiting for someone to ask you. It's 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 my go-to. Like you, it's Sour really common. I, mean, I, don't, I don't I don't like sauerkraut. I understand uh -huh. a lot of people do. That's fine. Yeah. I was not expecting you to be so quick with sauerkraut for your number one topic. Well, sauerkraut what did you what did you mustard? expect? Relish? You know, the use you know, ketchup, mustard, relish. Mm -hmm. Uh sauerkraut. ketchup. Ketchup. Can we can we hate on ketchup? <laughs> Are you Everybody's with me? going nuts about ketchup on hot dog. You know, it's like I don't care oh. what you put on your hot dog. You know, if you want maybe to put that's ketchup, the, maybe that's the problem, Mike. You need to care. <laughs> Everybody goes nuts about the the ketchup on the hot dog. You see that guy? Uh, what's his name? Michael Rapaport. I don't know if he's got a he's got a connection with this uh, condiment that's out. Mike's uh, Mike's mustard and what, what? What do you mean that guy? What's his name? Mike? <laughs> yes, we all know Michael Rapaport. <laughs> What's well, some what that guy. Uh, I'm I'm thinking some people in our audience may not know who this guy is. Can I, I don't do know a what he's, is. Is he an actor or he's kind of a, a social media personality now? Can I do an impression for you? Okay. I never do impressions. I'm terrible at them. This is Michael Rappaport doing his impression of Danny Aiello from Do the Right Thing. You ready? Yeah. Bookie. I'm gonna break your fucking head. Get in here, boo, Mookie. I'm gonna crack your big head. That's pretty good. Not bad, right? Pretty good. You know, let us soak in for a little bit. <laughs> so, so what is he talking about? Catch up. You want me to do he, the rest of the show in that voice? I can do it. <laughs> no, I can do that in Snyro push. He's the. He, I guess that'll, he's the. That'll be my poll. As a fellow Michael, he's a he's the spokesperson. I don't like. I said I don't know if he's got a connection. To the actual ownership of this product, but it's a new condiment out on the market. Mike's mustard. I think there's also Mike's mayo. You haven't seen these commercials? I don't have cable. No. Okay. I read books. <laughs> it's so funny. I keep forgetting you're an intellectual. That's right. <laughs> I've been watching Beverly Hills 90210 all day. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must it must be all those 90210 posts that uh yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't know he had his own thing of uh, condiments. But... Well, I don't. I don't think it's his. I, I think they just grabbed the, <laughs> the cheapest Michael they could find, and uh, they hadn't heard about this show, so <laughs> they could have. I could have slipped right in there. You know, I could have slipped cheaper. right in there. But um, no, he, he, he uh, blowing up like whatever the New Yorkest of New York hot dogs are. I can see him. No, they're not pushing the New York angle. And, and and whoever elected him king of New York, I don't get that one. You know, I mean, yeah, all you have to do is be around long enough and then you're 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 the king of New York. You're you're walking New York. <laughs> well, who, who who said he was king of New York? I mean Well, you were kind of giving him a lot of credit as being the uh, essence. The es the human essence of New York, and I I, I never so. quite I like, understood I like, that. One. I like him. As, I like him being bone deep New York. Like I look, uh -huh. I'm sure I don't agree with half of what he says. That's fine. Uh -huh. uh, it's, and yeah, he's not a great actor. He was in Beautiful Girls. Uh -huh. uh, I don't think it. anybody's ever said he's a great actor. But uh -huh. but then again, he pops up in great. Wasn't he in Copland? I don't think I've seen Copland. I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> but uh it's funny nobody i don't think anybody ever says he's a great actor but he seems to have built a pretty good career uh i think he's his 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 thing now is i mean i 
I see him pop up on Twitter every once in a while. And I, I guess he's he's a grump now, which, you know, I'm probably a grump oh. to most people. Too. Oh, look who's talking. <laughs> the no, but grumpy I, kettle, call him the grumpy pot. No, grumpy. I, just, I just admitted that lots of people see me as a grump. Is this but, a but he kind of whines when he's doing it, you know, and he, lots of facial expressions. He's, I guess that's well, the actor, actor in him. What's that? I, I, he's an actor. When, yeah. when you're a grump, when you're a grump, you're a little more nuanced. You're about the substance. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm about, the substance. But what would you say? So you like sauerkraut and mustard. All right. Anything else? Um, no, that's the go-to. But yeah, I mean, people like onions. There's a really good uh, hot dogs uh, place in Jer Jersey City. Um, I always screw up the name. <laughs> mm -hmm. Journals. What the, yeah, I'm not going to say it. Journal Square Drinks or something. Uh -huh. I don't know. It's a little walk-in place, but their the hot dogs are amazing. Everybody goes there. A lot of people get the onions there. Mm hmm you know, it comes in a sauce, not raw onions. Yeah, so I don't like, I like, I like raw onions on a hot dog. I don't like cooked onions like that. Like they always have that weird orange red gravy or whatever. Yeah, it's a sauce. Yeah. If, if Michael Rappaport is New York and Michael Lisk is New Jersey, would it please you to know that one of my favorite hot dogs is, uh, well, I only went there once, is uh, Rat's Hut. You been there? You know what? Uh, I've heard about Rutt's Hut. I think it's relatively close to MetLife Stadium. I always thought that one day I would just go there after a game. And uh turns out I never made it. But you've been there, huh? You, you retired from the game before you got a chance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I went it, there it, once. Because it's always on. Um, first of all, I like to plug one of my favorite food documentaries of all time. It's called a hot dog program. Mm -hmm. It came out of in Pittsburgh PBS like in 99. The guy's name is Rick Seaback. He also did the documentary Sandwiches That You Will Like, which is where I got the St. Paul sandwich, the Egg Foo Young Patty uh -huh. Wonder Bread. We have him to thank for that. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, Rutt's Hut is one. Anytime you see a list of great yeah. hot dogs or interesting hot dogs throughout mm -hmm. America, Rut's Hut is always in there. Uh, I've only been once. Uh, and I can't even remember if I like actually liked the hot dog and it was just kind of thrilling to be there. So uh -huh. was it was it crowded? No, I don't remember being crowded. Uh -huh. I, I, I was I was riding with a guy. We had a long road trip. I don't know what time of day we were there, so it might have been uh, you know, three in the afternoon or something off peak. Oh, okay. Uh, but are they skinless? But, Mike, I went there once 15 years ago. <laughs> I don't have... Uh, no, you know. but there, there's... I, I still, I don't think I know... We'll, we'll have to get Jerry in on this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm already Skinless. treading water with Jerry here. I've already <laughs> tried to say too much about this goddamn hot dog. Skinless, skinless uh, versus non-skinless? Or I've skin? I've already tried... my my. I've already flown too close to the sun. Uh-huh. Jerry, he's gonna have he's gonna ha he's gonna have a problem with what I've said so far about hot dog. I can't remember if it was skinless. It must have been skinless. I mean, their big thing is they kind of incinerate and they burst open. They're yeah, it, it, the snap. You get a snap. Uh, uh, but I'm not sure if you get the snap with the skinless <laughs> or the no. ones with the with the with the casing. Right? It's no, no. But no. um, I am I am treadling back back <laughs> back pedaling in fear now. Are you familiar okay. with Sabret hot dogs? Of course. Yes. Oh, okay. Now, this was like, you know, yeah, looking back on it, these, these, what were like great treats for my family are just like the most basic things. But, you know, it doesn't take away the fact that it was, it was a special deal. I, uh, my father, I guess for a while, you couldn't get Sabrets in our area, Central Jersey. Mm -hmm. And he worked in North Jersey. And I guess he he knew a guy. <laughs> oh, here we go. Jer uh, news flash, breaking news. Jersey guy knows a guy. So yeah, I you know I don't even know if he went to an actual place to get them or somebody would bring them in. You get five pounds of sabrettes in the brown, the butcher paper, and you know 
they we he'd bring them in and we'd be thrilled, you know, because yeah, those hot dogs had like a snap. Yeah. And um I love some bread. And, and it, it was strange because other hot dogs we would broil, you know. We weren't like always boiling hot dogs, mm -hmm. but with the sabret, I mean, you have to boil them. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I think you can fry them, but it, to me, it would be weird. To me, mm -hmm. like the only way to prepare sabret hot dogs is to boil them. Huh. Yeah. I say, when I was a, when I was a kid, I think my mother would boil the hot dogs, mm -hmm. and these were not sabrets. These right. were like French's Market. 80 for a dollar or whatever. But once I got old enough to make a couple dogs myself, I've always pan fried them. I don't know mm -hmm. if I've ever boiled a hot dog on my own. Yeah. I don't I don't want to reveal too much about my inner soul. <laughs> yeah. But that's a good yeah, I mean, yeah. You're going too deep there. Going too deep. I'm sorry. Yeah, too deep. But uh, speaking of hot dogs, is one of your favorite most favorite, or as Del Boy would say, most favoritist, uh, hot dog moment, or your proudest hot dog moment, being in the stadium at a Bruce show in the Meadowlands <laughs> at the show during which I ate eight hot dogs. <laughs> Is that something you brag to people about, that you were there? <laughs> I wasn't keeping count, but uh, you lot. ate eight hot dogs. I mean, I I'm I'm more surprised that uh, I mean, considering what those hot dogs went for, it, you must have spent spent a chunk of change that That's day. A good point. That's a good point. <laughs> I mean, they're not cheap, you know, even I mean, back then. This would have been 2003, and I think they had sabrettes. And uh, yeah, you know, all right, Mary's place. I'll pop down and have a dog. <laughs> you know, waiting on a sunny day, two dogs. <laughs> and yeah, over the course now, of course, it's a long show. Duh. Yeah, eight hot dogs. So that's something you can put, you know, you can throw out at a dinner party. Yeah, I was there. Uh -huh. The night Wilson went for eight. Yeah. Speaking of uh, mass consumption of hot dogs, you didn't ask me what my favorite toppings were. Oh, okay. I thought I thought you said raw onion. Oh, it's not my. Fa I would have to go, like, just a regular hot dog. Either plain or mustard. But if we can get a little deeper, raw onions, <laughs> chili. This is why I didn't ask. <laughs> not, oh, because I gave an answer? Well, I'm you, sorry. You, I thought your answer was going to be mustard. And I was like, oh, okay, wow. You, you knocked it out of the park with that one. Well, there's tears. Don't push me, Mike. <laughs> there's tears. You know, tears. mustard. Okay, here, let's let's have it. We're We're oh. already here now. Mustard. First tier. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go take a nap or something. <laughs> First tier. Oh. First, First tier, tier mustard. As in, if you're making hot dogs, you probably just have mustard lying around. Yeah. No problem. Uh, if I can get some raw onions, nice. I rarely have my number one Hormel chili just, you know, waiting for me. It's it's a special. Uh, or nacho cheese. Beans Unless or no beans? Beans. 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 The whole thing. Okay. Um, that was always my number one. It's Hormel. But mustard for just normal, everyday, whatever. Hormel, a little raw onion. And if I'm at 7-Eleven, nacho cheese. So, sorry, I, sorry I answered the question, Mike. You may go on. <laughs> nacho, ch nacho cheese. Yeah. I mean, they, they actually have with melted nacho cheese on those spinning wheels or you have to ask them to do that yeah yeah, yeah it's a river of nacho cheese no it's the pump thing <laughs> oh the pump thing oh that's disgusting you think there's some guy just spraying <laughs> no I, I was yeah I, I gave him too much credit <laughs> i came last time you had a 7-eleven <laughs> i'm not familiar with the, the pump cheese <laughs> sorry you hey know? sorry we're not all the queen of england <laughs> must be nice uh-huh so did, yeah, I saw you. You checked out the Coney Island Nathan's hot dog contest. Of course, I thought they um, were. I thought they canceled it. Yeah, it it, it it was a bit of a fake out. It was uh, on a rain delay for a long time, and then uh, rumors were spreading on the internet. Oh, it got canceled. But then Ooh. next thing you know, there they are. I mean, the yeah. the ladies had their contest early, about ten thirty in the morning or whatever. 
Mm -hmm. And the guys were supposed to go at noon or something. Yeah, the, the, the second I posted about, hey, since they're not having it, why don't you listen to our episode with our buddy Jeff Esper? And uh -huh. then the second I did that, they're like, oh, let's go ahead and have it. So a nice promotion. I, I I caught that. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> did, do we know uh, how he did? I, I forgot to check because he's chestnut. I mean, why do they even have this thing? Well, he 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 he's was his numbers were down. I think he was like 62 yeah. or something. He still won by 20 or whatever. And uh, I feel for our guy, Jeff, though. It seems like the hot dogs is, you know, he's got, I think they said he's got 20 championships of different things he's the champ of. Um, the problem is Chestnut is Michael Jordan in that no matter how good you are, if you were born during his time, you're just out of luck. You know, I don't care if you're Patrick Ewing. Uh, that's as far deep as I'm going to go for this list. Uh, <laughs> or Dominique or whatever. Uh -huh. You're not going to win. You're not going to get a title. Or Barkley, as long as Jordan is in the lead. Mm -hmm. It's like you have to kill the king to finally have a chance. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a chance. Because it's not like Chesswood, Chesswood, Chestnut's eking out a win here or there. Mm -hmm. He could have stopped like halfway through and won. Yeah. And which is crazy because... The year I moved to New York, the first contest I saw, I, I looked it up. The winner ate 19 hot dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, no, the numbers have been going up. But uh, this was a, uh, I mean, the, the record is 70-something, right? It's 76, maybe? Yeah. It's up oh, yeah. there. It's like you just happen to be born. On one hand, you were born in a time that was made for competitive eaters. Right. But at the same time... You were born to perfectly line up with Joey Chestnut, who might as well be the shark from Jaws. It's like you're playing for second if mm -hmm. you're lucky. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and he's pushing 40 and he's still, he, he's just unbelievable. Uh, um, I, 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 I did I catch. Uh, I should have seen how much Esper ate, but uh, I'll, you I'll can, look it You up. can look it up while I, I, I speak Ooh. now. <laughs> I did catch uh, ESPN showed the 30 by 30. Now, you've talked about this in the past. Oh, yeah. And I, I hadn't seen it before. So I watched that. And it, it was really interesting, you know, with uh, this was when, you know, Chestnut was in competition with uh, Kibiashi. Kibiashi, is that how you pronounce Kobayashi. it? Kobayashi. Kobayashi. Our buddy Jeff Asper came in second right. with 49. 49, yeah. Okay. Which is no, nothing to sneeze at. No, it's not. But uh, you can't. That's get a great people. documentary, the Kobayashi one. Heartbreaking, though. Yeah, and and it, and it did reveal to me, to me, the major revelation was that this guy, who's the uh, announcer, uh, his last name Ojo is Joe Shea or something like that. Is that Shea. Guy. Yeah, he comes off as the biggest asshole in this documentary. I don't know. I'm He's like, such a character. He is so perfect for this. You know. Well, I oh, lost I all respect. Him. You know, I used to thought I used to think he was, yeah, he's a carnival barker. He's kind of funny, you know, doing the proceedings. But I didn't know he, you know, he's running this this uh, league or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, that's and really and, and it's so you know, there's a financial thing with him. Um, yeah, so he he just came off as a jerk. I thought uh, in there's that. some skeevy, you know, he's pure snake oil. Uh huh. But you can't pick a better person on earth for those 10 minutes, whatever. And that buildup they have now, I don't know why they just haven't just gotten real comedians. Because <laughs> how these announcers, and it gets longer every year. They well, this guy's got a grip on it now. You know, he's not going to oh. let go, you know, because he, he owns oh. the thing now. I guess he's got to yeah, I, mean, find... I mean, the, uh, like, TV announcers. Oh, the, yeah. The t I was yeah. watching yesterday. They didn't take a breath for, like, an hour. Yeah. How they can fill up hours a breathless content about this <laughs> without just cracking up. Uh -huh. I think it's, I think it's incredible. That guy. Well, one guy, one guy was trying, the curtain. one guy was trying real hard with the jokes and they were just falling flat one after the other. Yeah. They, they should have a better comedian as part of that. I, yeah. I just love how serious they take it. Mm -hmm. Like this blather they do with a straight face. It's unbelievable. It yeah. really is. I, I think you might be right, O'Shea. I don't look behind the curtain too much with him, uh -huh. but he was made for this moment. Mm -hmm. 
they were trying to build up some in the women's competition. I guess uh, this woman is a formidable champion. I guess this is well. Well, she had to take a break. I think she she was pregnant or something the last time, so she didn't participate. Or, mm-hmm. uh, but she seems to be you know the uh, chestnut of the women. Uh, she's really pretty good. But I like the uh, the Japanese contender. She's like a young. Um, I should get get her name. She's very young, small, uh, and, and then I, I I see she's got like a a big um, YouTube channel. She's younger because Sonia Thomas was the queen for a while. She was the chestnut before. But yeah, this this woman who won, she's won like seven in a row or something. Yeah, it was it was the you know she's very petite uh, Japanese woman uh, who was on the left, and she was doing like this head shake thing when you know they all have different styles when they're mm-hmm. eating the thing, and uh, I think chestnut style maybe the the most disgusting, the way he, he what's he it's like two dogs at once and then he he just takes the wad of wet bun and stuffs it in right behind i mean it's disgusting didn't, to, did, to, didn't kobayashi pioneer that when he the yeah first one to yeah the i hat. think so with with the uh yeah dunking the bun in the water you know I mean, at that's some what, point it's going to be like the four minute mile or three minute mile humans can only run so fast at some point is somebody going to be able to eat 90 hot dogs can the human body do you would you would not have said the human body can do 76 Right. Years ago. But uh yeah, that's why I suggested an alternative eating contest where people ate hot dogs the way human beings eat hot dogs, you know? Because I'm thrilling. Tell me more. <laughs> How much can I pay to watch that? <laughs> I mean, it should, you know, yeah, I mean it's disgusting to watch the, this Coney Island contest because it's no humans eat that way. I love it, but I cannot believe. I, I guess I've been kind of watching it since since I moved to you know back in '90. I don't know if I really knew much about it before I moved to Brooklyn. But then again, it wasn't that big a deal because the winners would eat 15 hot dogs, and it somehow it got turned up when the guy, the Japanese guy before Kobayashi, whose name I'm blanking on, he was the original. He went on a tear, and he like doubled the number. Of hot dogs, he was the original star, and then Kobayashi came in. But how heartbreaking was that thirty for thirty? Talking about how like everybody turned on Kobayashi the second Chestnut won. Like go back to Japan and yeah, no, it it's uh, well, it's like the the worst. Yeah, no, it's it, it, it's unfortunate, but then 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 you think, well, this is a hot dog eating contest in New York. What 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 sort of client? What what sort of people do you think that's going to draw? I mean, it's like I wouldn't, I wouldn't think you know xenophobic racist. <laughs> well, no, but oh. but they're all lunkheads. They're you know they're probably half of them are probably drunk, you know. So it's yeah, I, I you know. Yeah, that, I, that was it, I didn't know any of that until I saw that documentary. That was heartbreaking. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but you know, it's uh, I don't know. I think he should have just just not taken it personally. Uh, just I, I assume say that these are idiots, and that every country has its its set of idiots. Um, yeah, that's tough though. But Chestnut is just like I can't believe he lost that one time to Matty Stone back in 2015. I got to go back and look at that now. Was he juicing? How did he lose? <laughs> uh huh. Trying to find this woman's name. Because she was really good, and you should check out some of her videos. <laughs> and her her videos are interesting. I guess I guess she's kind of doing plugs for these restaurants. Yeah. So there's, you know, she does she sets these little time limits to eat like a giant yeah. plate of f- fried rice, mm-hmm. and it's it's sort of similar to what Jeff Esper does, you know. But she's yeah. very casual about it. She's not. She know. I guess she just assumes she knows what she can eat, and. Uh, she's prepared to do it um but uh yeah she's very casual she's talking and she's not like the way jeff sort of just bears down mm-hmm. on on the plate you know uh but she she accomplishes it you know 
How many hot dogs do you think you could take down in 10 minutes? Oh, man, I don't we should know. we should have done that for this. We should have done it, you know, live. Next next year we'll do a hot dog eating contest. You think well, you could eat? No, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, that's something I don't want to do. No, but the woman's name. If you want to, <laughs> the woman's name is Mayoi Ibahara. Nailed it. And she ate thirty three hot dogs uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. But I just liked her style. She was dancing and stuff while she was doing it. She kind of has fun, you know. It's it's not like a, it's not as disgusting as Joey Chestnut. <laughs> um. Anyway, he is the he is the Harlem Globetrotters, and everybody else is the Washington Generals. Until he hangs it up, it is hard to see him getting beat. You don't think you could eat ten hot dogs in ten minutes? I don't think I could either, actually. No, no. Maybe it might oh, be. Ten minute, oh, 10 minutes? Yeah. Oh. No, no, no. No, I, you know, I, I, the only rule I had about hot dogs was in New York City, never to get more than one dirty, dirty dog from the street, you know? Uh, no, not one. No more than two. Two two was the limit. That's probably the most I got in it. I mean, well, if, I was... you bought, if you bought three three dirty dogs from the streets in New York, get ready because uh, <laughs> you may Who's be. Who's okay? Th three will send you rushing to the bowl. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. And actually, I, I, I saw it happen. I, I was working in an office and one of my coworkers, he, he tempted fate and he, he mm -hmm. paid the price. I mean, he was <laughs> he was very ill. I think he even had to go home. He was that sick. And it wasn't just number two. He was... Uh, I think number there was, three? There was some vo vomiting involved. It wasn't wow. just number two. I think there was some vomiting. I think it, it was a whole, a whole a full body purge <laughs> of those hot dogs. You make it sound like vomiting is worse than number two. I think it is. Really? Yeah. Hmm. If somebody did <laughs> both of those in front are, are of we, you. Am I going to have to do another be, poll? Which would, No, not you. <laughs> If somebody were to do those in front of you, which would you be more horrified? Uh, well, in front of me, that's, yeah, that's a different question. I'm talking about which would I rather do? I'd rather, you know, take a seat than be yeah. hurling violently over the toilet uh, with my eyes bulging. Um, oh, you paint, you do paint a picture, Mike. <laughs> I, your eyes bulge when you puke? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I've actually had you know times when I've had I've been violently ill. My eyes will be sore the next day. My really? stomach, my stomach, and my eyes. Hmm. It's weird, yeah. And it's from the bulging. It's like <laughs> bulging so you, you're still undecided. You can't, you can't, you can't figure it out. Figure what out? Which is worse? Uh... I guess vomiting indicates a more abnormal problem. Okay. Since one of these you do every day. Yeah. One you don't. Yeah. So exactly. There you go. All right. You figured Point. it out. Point <laughs> list. Points. <laughs> Points. Points. I think list. when I was I think when I was 17, I might have been able to do 10. Mm -hmm. Hot dogs. 10. Maybe. Wow, yeah. Three used to be my normal. Mm -hmm. And that's with the hormone chili. Uh, now I I could do three. I bet I could do six in ten minutes. I bet I could. <laughs> All right. Again, this could be a great video to help promote the show. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not doing enough. <laughs> oh. Stuff self the hot dog. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had thought of that though. I, I'd have done it, but. So I uh, last week I I mentioned I had started watching The Bear, mm -hmm. and uh, this week I can report that I finished. I mean, the whole it was, thing, both seasons. Yeah, both seasons. How much did you love it? <laughs> oh God! Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Aye, aye, aye. Listen, I, I I finished the thing, so uh, yeah. I I mean, give it some points for that. Uh, I think that the, the concept is good. You know, I mean, you know, I give them credit for like tapping into the whole food show thing, making it a drama, you know, 
the Nobody bad boy, the bad boy chef. I mean, they they tied up all the popular elements going in the culture now. Um, but the execution is something else. Let me just ask you one thing right off the top. When you're watching no, this no. show, The Bear, what is the elephant in the room that that this show is is sort of like missing? You know, if if they if they're going to make, you know, some pretense to be connected to how a real restaurant is run. Customers? Well, that's 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 actually, yeah, that's a good Good point. You 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 only see customers, you know, in sort of fleeting moments, and and you know, I was scared in the first episode because their 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 customers were a bunch of cosplayers, and I was like, what the hell is this, you know? Mm -hmm. But then there's another scene where uh, people are mobbing the counter, and it's it's getting uh, chaotic. But yeah, you don't see the customers too much. But there's there's a more obvious uh, element missing. I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you a hint. Duking, <laughs> trapping. No, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Allen White is the lead actor, mm -hmm. and uh, I knew him from Shameless. Mm -hmm. I'd watched Shameless. I, I I didn't make it to the end with Shameless. It was. I did. Was, I made it. To the end. You made it to the end. Wow. What, what, yeah. What was it? Eleven seasons or something? It was Eleven long. Seasons. Yeah, as I was going through it, sometimes I'd be like, "What am I doing? Why am I?" <laughs> well, that's what I did. I I did that too much, and then finally, I'm like, "Yeah, I got to cut the strings here." Not, not not that I didn't like it, not that it wasn't wildly entertaining, but sometimes we'd be like, "Why are they still making this?" Yeah, how much shit can these people go through? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm just amazed they went on as long as they did. Uh, yeah, well, I guess yeah. they were getting ratings, and people were still watching. But anyway, he he's a good actor. You know, I, I don't I don't say anything. You know, he you know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of particularly Joe Strummer. No. Joe Strummer? He reminds you of Joe Strummer? Something about his face sometimes when he when he looks you square. Something about his eyes or something makes me think of Joe Strummer. Well, the eyes, yeah, think about the eyes. Now I'm gonna blow your mind. Dreamy. He looks like a young Nicholas Cage. No. All right, don't be angry. Not a heartthrob, particularly. Ooh. So that takes me off. Um, <laughs> I don't know. He looks like a, a young Gene Wilder to me. Oh. With, with the sort of hooded eyes that he's got. Yeah, I don't think Gene Wilder had those blue eyes like this guy does. But just something yeah, in his expressions, you know. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, he's got this this thing on his head, which is just a you know it's it's a, it's a wonder to behold that head of hair of his, right? Don't be jealous, Mike. So, so, <laughs> so this this is the hint, right? He's a chef. Are you trying to make me feel better because I got my hair cut a couple weeks ago? <laughs> he's a chef, and he's got this living uh, this living I... living thing on his head. Wait a minute. Tell me this is not the elephant in the room. The it fact is. that he hair yeah that's the whole thing no the chef hat where's his chef hat i don't know <laughs> you're upset you're upset about the chef hat no chef hat in sight now marcus and sydney they have hair coverings not real chef hats they're, they're all they're all calling each other chef which that, that gets annoying after about 10 minutes right chef right. chef 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 you know and then there's sort of the military angle which I guess is apparently based on real life that some of these kitchens, they run them like it's a uh, a Marine boot camp, which is bizarre to me, but, you know, people are bizarre. Uh, so that, yeah, you see that's the, the brigade system, right? They, they, they bring in the brigade system at the... Uh, Very French. <laughs> at, uh, at the, at, what's it called before the beer? Uh, the, the bear, it's called... Uh, Beef, the beef. I can't oh, even I can't think of the remember. name. I just always thought of it as a bear. Anyway. Chicago land, or yeah, remember now. I have to, but I have to uh, go back and watch the verse again. So yeah, you know, it annoyed me that uh, the, the bear, chef's hat is what got to you. Yeah, no chef's hat with that head of hair. I mean, if he had like a, a, a you know, a buzz cut like uh, Crazy Richie, 
you know, I could see letting him slide. <laughs> but but this guy's hair, and they must, I think the the hair and makeup people at this show must have just had a ball, like reconfiguring it in every scene. There's different parts sticking out. It's in mm. various states of greasiness. Sounds like and, someone's smitten. <laughs> no, I can't deny the guy that had a hair of his, you know, and he, and he pretty much had the same hair in uh, Shameless, you know. It, it looks like be, he walked from the shameless set exactly. right over to there, right? He looks, he looks exact same. And his shirts have to be fitted to show off those muscles, you know, hey. the, the guns. It's always Guilty a gun show. Charged, bro. <laughs> he's got the gun show going. Been there. And then he's got, I guess you were talking about this guy, and I, I didn't know him from girls, his, his cousin, Richie. Cousin. Yeah. Who is, you know, watching the first season, I'm like, this is the biggest asshole character in TV since uh, Kendall Roy from Succession. Okay. I mean, the character is just a total jerk. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think almost, and then something bizarre happens with Richie, right? I mean, if that guy doesn't win an award, he, I, he was so fantastic this season. If... During his episode, when he has that little moment of triumph and when he's happy in the car, I literally almost, can you literally almost do something? I literally almost stood up and applauded. Mm -hmm. I was so happy he had that moment. Redemption for Rich. You say no. I just find it all unbelievable because mm -hmm. how many people do you know like Richie, you know, just a total asshole who literally changed their behavior overnight mm -hmm. you know all of a sudden he's just sort of the complete opposite well and, i think and, he saw his raison d'etre and you know maybe if all of us were struck by lightning like that mm -hmm. and so oh i'm supposed to be this i'm good at this maybe we would change that quickly okay i, don't think it's that simplistic. I just i just found his total transformation unbelievable and I I, th I even thought, well, maybe he, you know, he was rating, maybe people on social media were criticizing the characters so much that the writers did some quick thinking and said, well, you know, we've created this character everybody hates. He's mm -hmm. a total jerk. We we got to do something with this character. He's going to, people stop watching. Um, people are watching because of his character. I don't know about that. You found him likable in, in the uh, asshole mode? Not likable, but enjoyable to watch. Really? Okay. The character. All right. I, no, I'm I not saying every it. character has to be a saint. You right. know, I'm not saying every character has to be a saint. I'm saying that it's hard for people to do a sudden transformation like that. Um, well, not plus, that they can't. Not that they can't. I'm right. sure people can, but I don't know. I didn't find but, it believable in this show. But I don't know if he did a whole transformation, like all of a sudden he's going to be the greatest guy in the world. He just found out, oh, this is what I'm best at, how I can contribute. I doubt all next season he's not going to be an asshole or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, can I blow your mind with my one beef okay, you know, with the show, who I couldn't stand? I know she was great. Everyone loves her. I'm sure she's a great actress. The actress playing Sydney drove me insane from the second she walked on uh -huh. screen until uh -huh. the end of the show. Two reasons. And one's going to have to do with your buddy Richie, so you're not going to like this. But number one, she just has that style. Uh, maybe it's just for this one character. That I think was started by Nev Campbell during Party of Five. <laughs> and it's been done by every actress since. Uh -huh. That hesitating kind of talking to herself, answering herself, saying something awkward. Everything has to be this awkward, obvious thing to say. And she's hesitant, not hesitant. Okay. Drove me nuts. I just hate uh, that style uh -huh. of acting. It drove me nuts. <laughs> I understand I'm wrong. Everybody else likes I, I can't, I can't, I, I don't know party of five, so I, I can't uh, criticize your uh, uh, but, you observation know, here. But here, here's, Here's Everything what I'll say about Sydney. Uh -huh. Sydney, to me, 
has got to be the quintessential Gen Z character. Mm -hmm. The 20-something know-it-all. You know, mm -hmm. she 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 had a catering business. She worked for UPS. Mm -hmm. Um and now she knows everything about running a restaurant. I'm like, okay, you know, it's like, uh, and well, that, uh, and then you know, Carmi just takes her takes her under his wing as his partner, essentially. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, I can go with it, you know. The only um, thing in that vein I didn't like is, you know, she she comes into the fold. Oh, hey, this is Richie. This is so so, and of course, everybody who's known him all their lives and our family shit on Richie. Uh -huh. But like there was something, some scene in the second or third episode where she just snaps at him. You're a loser. You're a piece of shit. You're that. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I don't think that would happen. Yeah. A little like, premature. Third day right? on the job. Third yeah. day on the job. And she didn't get fired. Be, yeah. You'd be like, bye bye. Yeah. 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 That just would not. I'm like, that's so unbelievable. Maybe by the end of the second season. That's one thing. But like right away, she jumps in with Richie, you're a loser. You're this right. or that. It would have been bye bye. Yeah. But I just hated her style of acting. And again, I know I'm wrong, but she just drove me nuts with that style. Uh -huh. But yeah, otherwise, I, I think that second season is the best season of a dramatic sh drama, sh dramatic show that I can think of since True Detective, which I said, I think I said, uh, yeah, no, it's it's getting lots of praise, but I I thought I thought the show literally jumped the shark at the end of season one, mm -hmm. and this is you know if you don't want spoilers, <laughs> jump ahead, yep, but, skip ahead. But uh, the major premise in season one is that um, Carmi's brother Michael has committed suicide, and that Carmi has been has come back from New York where he was working in a fine dining restaurant. And now he's going to run this sandwich shop that his brother ran. Uh, and he's, you know, he's all stressed out from the suicide and just being back in this chaotic uh, restaurant. So it's driving him nuts. Um, but at the end of season one, uh, they find a note a suicide note from Michael and it's got a cryptic clue to uh, finding $300,000 in cans of tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can just shrug that, that type of stuff off. Sure. Yeah. And the thing is, it wasn't even like he hit the lottery and he put this money aside he borrowed this money from another family member who sure enough is not forgotten this money. <laughs> so it just made no sense at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, this, this is, we're in a realm of fantasy now. So any idea of like this being grounded in reality, I kind of let go at that point. And, might, you know, might as well have been Star Wars to you at that point. It might as well have been Star Wars, you know? Can I push back on something you did mention? Uh -huh. One of the first things you said is the idea that he's supposed to be some bad boy chef or whatever. Yeah. I give them a lot of credit. He wasn't. Now, he, he would get angry and frustrated and snap a couple times. But he wasn't, you know, Anthony Bourdain. You know, he wasn't doing crap. He wasn't doing heroin and screaming at everybody and drinking and this and that he was very his whole thing was we're going to treat each other with respect and nice you know he was yeah, always right yeah you know, okay maybe not the yeah. yeah maybe not a bad boy maybe just a troubled boy he had never yeah. been to a party before yeah so it's not like he was out hitting the clubs this and that i think he was kind of the opposite um of that because it's very easy today to lean into that stereotype of a chef mm -hmm. doing drugs and drinking while you're working, going out mm -hmm. hitting the clubs, banging out a bunch of you know college sophomores or whatever. <laughs> uh, they didn't sophomores. do that. Sophomores? Why did you have to go to sophomores? You know, I'm it, sorry, it, juniors, uh, junior transfers, junior transfers. Junior transfer. <laughs> sorry, okay. Mike. Um, right. I, I feel like they didn't do that, um, which I give them credit for. 
And then I, yeah, I just had a hard time with the, you know, all right. They had a, a loyal following at this restaurant, you know, and it's sort of like they decided, well, screw them. We're going to come back as a fancy restaurant that those former customers probably can't afford. And we're just going to go for the rich clientele. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I mean, I don't. I don't see you as a fine da- dining uh, type of person. I certainly don't don't include Shame my on you, Mike. You don't know me. <laughs> I don't know you, but but just after hearing what you put on a hot dog, I can, I can, I can assume you're not a fine dining guy. And neither am I. Neither yeah. am I. When I see these little plates, and that that's in the uh, I guess it's Marcus episode where he mm-hmm. goes to Copenhagen. And he has to go, he has to go to Europe. To, to learn the tricks of the trade and they show him it's just a long drawn out scene where he's putting I don't even know what it does that's the other thing about this show they're talking about dishes and they're reeling off names of ingredients and I don't know half of them <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about they might as Nobody well be, speak, be speaking a different language because I don't know what they're talking about I mean the, the, the most glaring one was when <laughs> When Cindy uh, finds something, I guess Carmi had written down about frozen frozen grapes and bone marrow. <laughs> what the hell are they talking about? You want them to dumb it down for <laughs> us? No, it's okay. They speak this language. Yeah, but it's just, you but it's just, it's convoluted. It, it's it's uh, not convoluted. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's, it just comes off as pretentious to me. That 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 they know the writers are, are just throwing this stuff at us, knowing that half their audience has no idea what they're that's, talking about. I, I think that's how chefs would speak to each other. Are, yeah. Were you on set there in ER when George Clooney wouldn't turn to you and explain what was happening, or did you just roll with the? I never watched that show. Can I can I can I make you happy, Mike? Can yeah. I, one thing that did bug me about the finale. And, and I don't really care because I still love the finale. But when he was trapped in the walk-in, yeah, and the whole thing was like, you know, he's stuck there for the service. And then, like, well, you know, we'll be able to get him out eventually. Let's just keep trucking. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, I've never worked in a kitchen like that. At some point during service, doesn't somebody need to go into the walk-in to get shit? Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that wouldn't that have hit a like oh fuck we're screwed because you can't get into the walk in freezer? Well, there are there are there are you know in their defense I'll say there are other refrigerators in the kitchen, Mm -hmm. so I can I'm I'm assuming that for one night they have all their stuff at the stations and but that that, that wasn't a big thing. They were like oh shit, Tommy's stuck in there, but nobody said what the fuck are we gonna do? We got to get in there because we have Uh a bunch of stuff we have to get. That nobody ever seemed even a tiny bit alarmed about that. Yeah. So I don't know, but I was happy to whatever suspend belief for that because it was still so fantastic. Now I'm guessing, by guessing, I think I know that you were not in love with the Christmas episode. Oh my god! Here we go. <laughs> I, you... oh my god, I was just like, what is you know? Yeah, it was just. All right, it's too much, you know. It's too much. Um, Boy, my... was there was was there like one adult in the room during that that thing? They're all they're all bouncing off each other like lunatics. Oh. Um, I got to look at it again to tell you the truth. I I watched it. I you know I had a few beers and put it on, and I'm like, is this oh. is, is this as bad as I think it is? It's just like. It was yeah, and then they and then yeah, there's all these cameos. Bob Odenkirk's there, and Jamie Lee Curtis, and uh, John Mulaney, your boy. He's mm-hmm. sitting there. I'm like, really? You know, it's yeah. Well, they you know they obviously knew people would talk about that episode. People are talking about it. Uh, I thought it was ridiculous, but um... I thought as a nation. We could all come together loving the bear. <laughs> not you. Uh-huh. They I should love... put, they should have called the, the the series the hair. The hair. Ooh. 
But yeah. oh, next season, somebody finds a hair in a dish and they spend the next 10 episodes trying to find out who's it oh, is. I wonder whose it is. There's, there's only this chef back here with this, this hedge on his head. Let's go through the alphabet. <laughs> the bear, the care, the dare. Okay, next there'll be an episode where somebody dares somebody to do something crazy. Uh-huh. The fair. Uh, one of them gets stuck in a cab, can't get to the restaurant, uh-huh. can't pay the fare. You already covered the hair. One last thing, and I, 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 go ahead. I will, go ahead. Sorry, I will say this, and I think this is more and more true of shows like this in this era of ten episodes streaming. Mm-hmm. I don't like. I don't like. I don't like prestige TV. I don't like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> prestige at all. TV. I think this gets. I don't like that. But <laughs> uh, I will say, of course, next season I'll be first one chomping to the bed. I, I would be fine if they came out and said, you know what? This is it. We like the story. We like how it ended. That's it. I don't know what they're going to do. Then again, I could have said the same thing last year. I have no idea what I need to see in another season. You know what actually, I mean? Actually, I, what I thought about after the end of this second season, I'm like, you, know what, would, you know what would be great? The mayor? <laughs> no. The, the, season three starts off. And this is just how life keeps repeating itself. So now he's got this foo-foo fine dining restaurant. And guess what? Things just start getting chaotic in the back again. <laughs> so it didn't matter. You know, yeah. everything falls apart. You know, that's just life. You know, they had their the moment of triumph, but but he, you know, he ends up spending the night in the, the freezer <laughs> locked in. But, you know, so, of course, yeah, in the next season, I want to see it fail all over again. Because, I mean, it's going to have to. That's, what else? Yeah, that's what life is. It's, it's you like can't one have f- a smooth running restaurant. But yeah, it's as, one failure uh, after another. So that's my hope for the, the next season. <laughs> I would enjoy. I would enjoy that actually. You know, because I just, yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people watching the second season felt like great. You know, he he brought it all together. But you know, I think the whole freezer thing was just like them saying, "Well, you know what." Your big mm-hmm. night can also be a terrible night. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, I, yeah, this great restaurant could also be a nightmare. I just, I just, and I I hope I'm going to be blown away next year. And I wouldn't be shocked if I am by season three. But if they said, you know what, that's a wrap. We think this is a perfect little story. Mm-hmm. Two seasons, 20 episodes or whatever. Yeah. I'd be like, fine. You know, mm-hmm. there's some shows now. Uh, uh with this era of streaming and sh- this show drops here and this show drops there, I'm t- starting to put together a list of shows where I watched the first season and it's fine. Mm-hmm. And I don't need to see a second season. There's too much other stuff to watch anyway. And I like a show. I don't care about it enough to, you know, the, the flight attendant. Remember that one? No, I'm not up on TV like you. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds like an insult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, you I, I, I mean? was so much TV now. Uh-huh. Yeah, I watch one season, uh-huh. and I'm sometimes I'm okay saying, you know what, that that's fine. See, I would have done that with with this show after the end of the first season. I thought it was so ridiculous. I'm like, okay, I would have been done. But this is what I do for this show. I knew, <laughs> I knew you you already watched the second season. So, so I made the sacrifice for egg for what. Lord, don't say I don't put in the effort. Hallelujah. I can't wait for I can't wait to write that country western song about you. How you made it through the second season of the bear. And, and let me just say this. I'm not a prude. You know, I don't have anything against the odd uh profanity. But this show, to me, when you lay on the at times this show seems to be like working how many how many times can we work the word fuck into a sentence? And, and it seemed like they, they, they kept trying to top themselves. Fuck, 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 fuck. It's, it, it just got to be too much. Well, I'm like, really? This is just lazy writing after a while. I'll and they all that. have the mouth, you know, every character. So it's not even like there's some characters that like aren't, you know, going to start, start, you know, with the, with the diarrhea mouth. But they all do. So it's like, yeah, oh. it's, this is tiresome. First of all, Mike, I'd respectfully ask that you watch your language, please. <laughs> but from everything I've read or seen, 
And again, I haven't worked in these restaurants. Yeah. Uh, but most of this seemed pretty, I don't want to say tame, but yelling and screaming F-bombs seems fairly standard for that world. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say something. Maybe it's going to blow your mind. Hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> Hit me, buddy. I don't disagree. I, I, I think I think this is the way people talk. But yeah. do we have to have it nonstop everywhere in life? In a, in a kitchen, I think that's the world that I've seen mm-hmm. presented to us. That's the I've everything I've read or again seen. Most kitchens seem worse. Uh-huh. You know, uh, they're completely abusive. It's all insults, insults, insult. F you, f that. You're a beep. You're a beep. Mm-hmm. Grabbing whatever. This yeah. seemed fairly tame compared to what I've seen yeah. uh, through other TV shows. I don't and, know. Yeah, I understand it's realistic, but I don't know. I, for Can we try and lift somewhat? Okay, uh, hold on. You know. Let me make it up. <laughs> right? It's, same. it's, same. it's the same with music. With right? no fucks in it. it it's, it's the same with music, right? I mean, you have you have music now that's just full of profanity. And I understand that's the way people talk, but it's like really we we can't we, we can't rise above that anymore. We're just going to accept. All right, this is the way we talk, so the culture is just going to be everything's just going to be full of profanity everywhere you go, every yeah. book, every movie, every song, every TV show. It's yeah. just like it, yeah. it gets tiresome. It's tiresome, and it's lazy. I just think it's lazy. I, I think you'd have an argument. If the show wasn't set in a kitchen mm-hmm. area where that apparently is, you know, even more intense than it is on the show. And I'm saying just balance it out. Like I said, can we just maybe have one fuck in a sentence instead of five? You know, just bring it down a little bit. I'm not All saying right. to eliminate. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not asking to add. Don't to you talk. say it once? Who cares if you say it 10 times? Once Don't the seals are broken, <laughs> who, are, who, who are you scandalizing uh-huh. after that point? I don't know. Just uh, moderation. That's all I ask for. Moderation. All right. I disagree. Okay. I'm not fine with it. <laughs> bring it on. Bring it on. Uh, bring it all on. Right, yeah. Well, so what? What do we? What uh, did we eat this week? I almost, I almost had a panic. You know. Uh, I chose. Well, it is. It is a weird week because of the holiday. Yeah. And I'm working from home today, so it is was odd. Uh, but uh, sorry, go ahead. I called one of my places, and it was closed today. I was like, "What's that all about?" The day um, after America's yeah, birthday, yeah, yeah, that it's... seems pointed. <laughs> Come on, know. China. I don't know what that was all about. I think, so yeah, I had yeah. to. Uh, I w- I was going to go back to Howell Kitchen, but Howell Kitchen was closed today. Um, so I went back to China One. Good news for China One. For some Mongolian chicken. Uh-huh. And uh, I'll say this about Mongolian chicken. If you like onions and scallions. <laughs> I was going to say, another <laughs> name for this dish could be onions. <laughs> I opened this thing and I was like, <laughs> you saw the picture I saw. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I mean, who eats onions? Like, <laughs> I mean, you might as well just eat a whole raw onion. Uh-huh. Whole onion. There are a lot of onions in this dish. You have been warned. Okay, I thought it was just mine. No, mine was. Wait till you see my picture. You can barely see the see the chicken. You know, (laughs) you know when I take my photos, which appear tomorrow on Twitter and Instagram, I try not to stage it. You know, I try to just open it up, show them what I got. But this one, it was. There was so many onions. <laughs> I wanted Lovely. to see have have them see at least a little bit of the chicken because they're gonna like, oh, Mike bought a pile Onion. of onions. <laughs> what do you think that sauce was that comes with it? Well, Cause... we had we had the same sauce with the Mongolian beef, and it's it's yeah, it's slightly different. I guess it's I guess it, you'd say it's tangier. It's well, got a tangy. Well, when I opened it. I was like, oh, it looks, other than the 19 onions, uh, I'm like, the chicken looks okay. But then I got hit, and I thought I smelled garlic. 
And I was like, if this thing is just drenched in garlic again, uh, but it wasn't. No, so that's no. my story. It's, yeah, it's not a garlic sauce, mm -hmm. but it's not uh, it's not the same sauce you get with, say, chicken with broccoli. Mm -hmm. The goop, what we refer to as the goop. Wasn't the goop. Thank it God. Wasn't the goop. Thank God. <laughs> I think it's a little lighter. Um, Definitely lighter. Yeah. So, I mean, I enjoyed it again. China won, you know, another five pounds of food <laughs> for one person. So I'll get a I'll get a few meals out of this, you know. Uh I'll say this, China One has got to tighten up their uh packaging. You are um, warned, China One. <laughs> I got some soup on the side. And uh, you know how you, you do a turn, you turn the car, and sometimes the bag falls over. So it didn't uh the soup did not survive uh falling over. What kind I had of leak I had leakage. Yikes. I had leakage. So which meant that now I have to hustle with the I mean the, the the dish the main dish was still very hot. The bag has pretty much disintegrated. <laughs> I've got the wet soggy bag and I'm trying to get in the house as quickly as possible. Uh soup is dripping on my pants. So I had a whole little uh, catastrophe leading up to this meal but uh soup was it? i got the wonton soup uh i got wonton soup at this place last time and i thought it was terrible so i gave him another chance for some reason and it was a little better the, the wontons were you know they were, they were larger and um it was good except for the leakage this was the first time i've ever been other than the other week when i just didn't get a lot of wontons mm -hmm. This wonton soup that I got on the side as well was tasteless. Really? I'm like, yeah. how do you have wonton soup broth or whatever? No salt, wow. no nothing. It was a hundred percent tasteless. Wow. The wontons, uh, very disappointing. Now, th now this is near where you live. So is this your go-to Chinese place near where you live? Yeah, it was just whatever popped up. Wow. Uber Eats. <laughs> the way you're so casual doing this, yeah. I mean, I, I give you credit. You, you. How Thank many restaurants? How many restaurants do you think you've tried in the 53 weeks? Probably 52. <laughs> 52. I, I have ordered. I must have ordered from here before because it pops up. Oh, you, you've ordered. That guy had gotten sweet and sour chicken from this before, so I uh -huh. had gone at least once. But oh, uh, okay, tasteless wonton soup. Uh -huh. And another dang which is not going to be a reflection on my Mongolian chicken. Another, fir not a first, but a rare instance of the fries kind of weren't great. And you know I love raving about <laughs> Chinese fries. restaurant french fries. Uh -huh. Of course I did. And uh -huh. these were just kind of like flat. Uh -huh. so. Flat fries, tasteless wonton soup. And a bucket uh, of onions. And a bucket of onions. <laughs> but the chicken itself was, was fine. Uh, Tasty. I wouldn't say tasty. Tangy. I wouldn't say tangy. <laughs> I think fine. I think I nailed it with fine. <laughs> uh, maybe it was just place because, again, it was just kind of tasteless. It was like, uh -huh. okay, chicken with a faint flavoring of something. Uh -huh. uh, and it was perfectly fine. You saw in the picture, I did try to jazz things up. Uh, I ordered uh, extra young gravy on the side. <laughs> Let's splash that on everything. That made it a little better. Uh, yeah. Foo young foo gravy does. Yeah. Uh, solve a lot of things, but uh, just tasteless, kind of. Yeah. So I, I would give it. I mean, I liked it in that it was fine, and I'm happy to eat it. But I can't go above a seven one, and I think seven that's kind of generous, considering it was mostly onions. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think seven sounds right. I mean. If if we are, if, we are locked in today, young we're Michael, locked we're locked in. If uh, yeah, the, the the onions is a bit much, you know. They 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 overdo it with the onions, but I like okay. onions, you know. Huge uh, slivers. Who eats that? <laughs> they go down easier. They slide down. I don't want an onion sliding down my throat. Who, who does that? <laughs> it's part of eating, Greg. It's part of eating. When, when did we have we had Mon Mongolian beef before? We had Mongolian beef. Yeah, we, I was. Yeah, I was I a little. I'm trying to be creative with uh, 
what we're getting to because yeah it's hard for me to avoid shrimp dishes and uh, you can get a shrimp dish, <laughs> dish. I, I still find it hard to believe i can't just substitute pork for whatever shrimp dish you have i, I want to try that next, next week. week will be uh that that experiment yeah let's uh, do that for next week i don't have you, my, you know what i wanted to do this yet. week uh but none of my places had it you know you had mentioned uh a Chinese place that served burgers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, that's a good idea. <laughs> no, it would have been great for today. Cheese steak. <laughs> but none of my places have a broad uh, American and Chinese cuisine uh, menu. One, the one that does have it, it's just all the fried stuff. It's the the nuggets and the fried shrimp and uh, you know anything they can throw in the fryer. We should so, do that. Uh, Chinese restaurant cheeseburger or cheese steak. <laughs> That'll that'll be my, our uh, yeah that'll be our uh, holy grail. <laughs> a lot of them have cheese steaks. I've never tried one. Cheese steak. But now I'm miffed. Uh, today, since I was at home and Wegmans is downstairs, today is the day I should have tried to do the uh, buffet. You know, grocery store buffet Chinese. Uh, okay. Meal should have done yeah. that today. Yeah, you've brought that up. I don't have that option near me. I'd have to travel for it and. I'd rather not have to do that. But yeah, maybe, uh, you know, I'll do a shrimp dish and you do uh, a buffet. You know, this is, it's a workaround. This will be a, a workaround. <laughs> from what I've seen. If special it's, assignment. Uh, You'll be on special from what I've assignment. Seen if it's uh, Asian hot bar downstairs, I might do better trying shrimp. It is <laughs> grim. It was, but I, th I thought it'd be fun it to try. It, so. But I think next week, let's try that where you pick a shrimp dish. And I in innocently ask. <laughs> Could you please change this shrimp for pork? I find it hard to believe I'm the first person to ever try that because every, every 9,000 of the dishes are just swap out your protein, but okay, there's some magical 10 that are <laughs> shrimp only. Well, yeah, you you have to find that particular dish so so it would be suited to you. So, yeah, this is, you know, for you to pick out a dish, a shrimp dish. Ooh, Tell me what the smoke. shrimp dish is and then We'll be on the same page, you know. I'll get the shrimp, and you'll get the uh, swapped out version. So I give this a seven one, but this is another dish I'll never think of again. Yeah. If it shows up, fine, but you know, whatever. You know, I've mentioned before. I, you know, I I I was a chicken and broccoli guy. That was my go to, and uh, I would say if you're a chicken and broccoli person, and you want to switch it up and you, and you like onions. <laughs> this why it might be a good alternative, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not going to be a go-to No. Yeah. Perfectly fine. Yeah. Just more disappointed in the French fries and wonton soup. So <laughs> luckily I didn't order chicken McNuggets like I usually do. <laughs> if those let me down, that'd have been too much. <laughs> it would have been too much to handle. And of course I didn't get a fortune cookie. I got a fortune cookie. the last cookie. time I got one? Yeah. I, I guess maybe the golden I, bowl. I mean, you know, golden like bowl. Said, Back to that now. <laughs> well, that's the monopoly. That's the fortune cookie monopoly. Like maybe here, maybe in Virginia and DC, you have to ask for it in most places. I yeah. don't know. This is maybe the dumbest one I've come across, which is saying a lot. I like to hear this. A short pencil is usually uh -oh. better. Hey, 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 hey. it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. No problem. That's what you do with it, Mike. Come on now. That's not what love's about, Michael. Yeah, it's not what love is about. A short pencil is usually better than a long memory any day. I actually like that. Well, number one, that's not a fortune. No. Uh, that's a uh, line from Mad Men. Uh, the weakest ink is stronger than the best memory or something like that. Remember that? No, uh, I don't remember that. Okay, well that's that, I guess. I didn't like that show. Well, okay, well that's we'll show. Okay. <laughs> Prestige. I'll shut TV. that one down. Prestige TV. You didn't like Mad Men? Oh. <laughs> All right. I don't I don't know why I still get surprised. Yeah, I, I I had a hard time seeing the triumph and coming up with an uh an ad campaign. Whoopee! Exciting. Mm. Holiday Inn's gonna be happy with us. 
You're it's gonna be <laughs> talking to you about these things is like, did you watch Apollo 13? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I, I guess did. you're yeah. rooting against no when uh everything goes to shit and Ed Harris goes, okay, what do we have that still works? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just gonna start asking you, what do you what do you think of that you like? <laughs> then we'll go from there. But yeah, I, I like that saying because I've learned, unfortunately, the hard way as a copywriter who does a lot of concepting and everything. The weakest ink is stronger than the best memory. Uh, but but to your point, that's not a fortune. What could no, you know? Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you something. Yeah. I thought of when I was dumping my Fu Young gravy on everything. Do you think it'd be easier uh -huh. to get Dave Grohl on this show if I didn't hate the Foo Fighter so much? Mm -hmm. We have the Foo tie-in. Like Foo Young, like Foo what? Foo Fighters. What if Dave Grohl wanted to be on the show, but I refused because I hate the Foo Fighters so much? Would that upset you? No, I, I, I would be happy to have him on the show. Um, I, but if know, I refused I, because I can't associate that Foo with our Foo, would that would that break us apart? Would that be the would that tear us asunder? Well, I I like to just see how you approach him, and then what are you just going to sort of let him down at the end when you sort of string him along for a while? Well, I'm like not going to approach him to string him along, knowing I'd say no. Oh, let's say Dave Grohl called up, say, "Hey, I love your show. I want to be on it," and I said, "Thank you, Dave Grohl. <laughs> you seem like the nicest guy in the world. You're you're great, but." The Foo Fighters are the dullest band in the history of Earth. Sorry. Maybe go on a different show, but not, mm -hmm. not ours. Would that Come be... On. Come on, you don't like Everlong? No. No. I feel bad because I do think he is probably... I was suspicious of it for years. I did finally accept he probably is the nicest guy in rock, but his the music is just mind-numbing. But... Yeah, I, I don't have anything against the guy. Yeah, I mean, I think I I bought the first two Foo Fighters albums and they mm -hmm. didn't uh, they didn't really do it for me. So I kind of moved on. But he, he shows up in lots of documentaries. He doesn't turn a lot of things down. That's why I'm saying I, I don't think it's such a long shot. <laughs> <laughs> that could be true. If you if you worked him yeah. on Twitter, you know, uh, he might he might. Be our first uh, major guest, yeah. Is it is it no, even legal? Let, to let have me take a that back. I, I, I'm gonna. Uh -oh, people are gonna get mad uh -oh. at me. <laughs> you messed up. People are gonna get mad at me. No, he 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 would be one of our biggest guests. One of several big guests we have. Um, but you you wouldn't get upset if I we had to say no because of my aversion to Foo Fighters. Well, I'd have a different host for that show. I'd swap you out. <laughs> what? <laughs> Take the week off, Greg. Take the week off. You, you've done a lot for the show. You well, deserve... if I knew how much you hated the bear, maybe I'd have said, you know what, Mike? <laughs> Set this one out. I'm going to have a guest on the likes of the bear. Uh huh. Anyway, I just thought of that because the word foo. Yeah. Like no. all the bands in the world, why does his have to have foo in the title? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't know what else I got. Okay. Any shout outs this week? Uh, Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl. <laughs> Yeah, Dan, we're we're. Uh... I, I would. I, I meant to give a shout out in the beginning when we started talking about ketchup. Mm -hmm. You know my stance on ketchup, right? Uh, it's for children and Midwesterners. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like to use this as a shout out. Anytime we mention ketchup, a little shout out to our buddy Waddy. Uh, <laughs> him being a solid Midwesterner, he loves his ketchup on hot dogs. Hot dogs. This motherfucker puts ketchup on hash browns. <laughs> Not, uh, I, that's that's not bad. Oh, here we go. Just All a right. little, like you know, not not saturated. I don't mean I don't mean like coarsely cut potatoes. I mean like griddled. Yeah, hash browns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, the, they're the same thing in New Jersey. He'll put he'll put ketchup on anything. So a little shout out to our buddy Waddy. How about uh, scrambled, eggs? Eggs? scrambled eggs? Scrambled eggs? Yes, anything. Yeah. A little scram uh, a little on scrambled eggs isn't terrible. Oh, it is terrible. Moderation, moderation in all things. Uh, he, of course, is the father of our next generation leader, Egg Foo Young fans, <laughs> Jack Watts, who's 
Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, egg food what superstar maybe we'll have both of them on the show to that would be great yeah uh, catch up so see if you can work on that instead of dave Grohl. all right oh okay <laughs> let me erase uh, dave Grohl out <laughs> Waddy and jackie watts in all right i have my marching orders uh-huh i mean i hope i don't get kicked to the curb for a week because of it all right <laughs> uh, that's my shout out who, that's who your shout out I don't have any shout outs, but uh, I want to thank everybody for listening. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, do do all the things that, yeah, that happens down there and do all the things. Boosts are uh, standing in the world. <laughs> the numbers have been going up. I'm happy with the numbers. But then I, I see I'll other things out there and I'm like, they've got several thousand. I'm like, how, how is that fair in this world? Can't, can't live how like that. is that fair in this world? Can't live like that, Mike. You got to do think what I think. I think you saw yeah. my tweet about uh, Vulture did a did a review for a podcast that only had three episodes. Oh yeah, <laughs> we can't get a review a year in. You know, anybody? Who was the star of that? I assume it was some superstar that like. No, they they weren't superstars. I never heard of them. You know. I don't think they're uh, they were superstars, but hey. I could be wrong. Maybe they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Well, let's, be on, let's be honest. I don't know if you know all the superstars. No, I don't. I don't know who the superstars are anymore. I see articles about people, and I'm like, who's that? Who's that? Most of the times, they're they're people from the Real Housewives or something. You know, yeah. it's like okay, yeah, that 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 generation is they're riding the crest now, you know, and and I'm on the way out. I'm going, going, uh, being washed like, to the shore, which is fine like with you, me because I don't think I'm missing anything. I I don't feel like I'm missing anything. It's like that progression you make through life. Saturday Night Live host and musical guests. You go from knowing them, yeah, knowing their stuff to oh, I know that guy. I don't know all of his work. Uh -huh. But okay, I know that guy too. You literally have never heard their name before. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah, but, no, I'm I'm there. I'm way ahead of you. But yeah, we can't. Don't worry about that stuff. We just got to do our best every week, bro. That's, that's all, all we have do. to do. That's all. All you do. Yeah. All right. Oh uh, yeah, everybody do everything Mike said, and uh, we'll see you next week. Happy uh, egg food wedding. <laughs> Is that a new expression? Egg you food gonna wedding? go out with egg, egg food wedding? Yeah, yeah. Like as a verb, is that is that cool? All right, no, it's it's good. You better copyright I it. I didn't send it through our lawyer. You better, so you better copyright that thing because people are going to be using that left and right. I know that. Is it that hot? Egg it's food hot. wedding. <laughs> That's hot. Egg food wedding. <laughs> Let's go egg food wedding. Here we go. I like it. All right, Take buddy. Care. Bye.